Hi, writers. Welcome back to the Writer's Room. We've had such an exciting month of creative explosion, of stretch goals, some craft work, and we're going to be doing some mindset today. You know, why, why so much mindset, right? Well, I believe mindset is really 100% of the game and action is 100% of the game, okay? We can't just visualize ourselves being incredibly impactful, award-winning writers that not ever write. Of course, action is so crucially important. So I have sort of a, a joke that mindset is 100% and action is 100%. So, um, so we're just gonna play with that um, totally non-mathematical <laughs> statement. But I wanna do mindset today around something fun because summer is fun and we wanna play. And so let's think about um, let's think about in our, um, you know, in our mindset work, um, there's something really kind of fun and easy to remember when you have a new goal. So those of you that participated in our stretch month this month um, for June goals, um, you know, you took more action than you would have otherwise, hopefully, if you're playing, playing along with us. And so now what we get to do is dive in and really um, talk about other ways to become the writer to fulfill the writer's vision that we want to fulfill that's in our hearts and souls and a lot of times you know things end up feeling like fantasies and they feel impossible and they feel out of reach or they feel like just silly like make-believe right and so I'm about helping you take something that feels like a fantasy and make believe in a vision and making it a reality and so many things in my life um, have happened that were fantasies and seemed like pipe dreams and for so many of our clients as well. So one of the ways we can do that is practicing something called be, do, have. You may have heard this if you've been around in other coaching circles or read different personal development books, but the idea is that we normally want to have something, then we feel confident to take action and believe in ourselves, and then we go take more action, and then we um, just, you know, feel really great, right? And unfortunately, when we want to do something we've never done before, manifest something new, um, typically we have to flip that whole thing um, on its head and the have actually comes last. And what does that mean? So be, um, what is it like to be, to be the feelings, the energy, the vibration, if you want to get into quantum physics or just the, you know, the, um, the state of being, what is the state of being? of someone. So let's say you really want to win a writing award, a particular writing award. And you know, you want to have that. You want to say I am a, you know, Penn Faulkner award winner, or the National Booker Prize award winner, or Orange Prize book winner, Nebula Prize book winner. Um but you've never done it before, you're going to have a lot of gremlins like you can't do that and only famous people get picked for that or blah blah. So we want to wait to have it to believe we're good enough, but actually the trick is to start being it now so what would being a nebula or orange or booker or henry prize winning author um macarthur genius grant winning author what would you what would that that you be being right being is how we feel how we even our posture is about being it um it's about like living i am an award-winning renowned author right and then doing be do have in the in the sequence then we do it so first it's actually being isn't that wild like so how do you get into that how do we how do we feel into being something that we've never done before and so i like to just you know close the eyes and just imagine it's six months from now and you've i'm just using this writing award substitute in whatever you want you know you've made the bestseller list or you finished your draft or you found an agent whatever it is right so let's count to three one two three and actually like step in and if you're doing this with the video you can actually stand up and step in i'm going to sit so that i'm still with you step into the you that has already written the book won the award reached that list out impacting people and what do you notice Really take a few minutes here and notice how you're standing or sitting. What are you wearing? What feelings are you having? Like knowing that you've achieved this awesome thing that was a goal for so long. Feel it in your body. And what's happening in your life that's different than before you had this? Are you 
talking to different people? Are you Zooming with different people? Are you traveling any different places? What's happening in your life when you've already achieved this thing? Okay, now take a big deep breath, shake it off, shake it off, and then make some notes. You can pause the video and make some notes. Really get granular. You know, what is, I had a, I had a client once, um, and I'll never forget this because it was great. She, she was feeling like she loved her work and she knew she was good at it, but she felt like she had a very small universe, right? And she wanted to have a big impact. She wanted to really be a thought leader, leader in her industry. And so we did this exercise and what was it like being that leader already? Like what was different? And so one thing she noticed is, you know, her posture, she was, she was really like upright and she wasn't worried and hunched. She was just so, so we started working on just like sitting and standing like that for a little bit every day. And then she noticed that she had these fabulous outfits. She was just like, you know, I usually just like schlep in whatever, but I was at this place where I was really a leader in my industry and going out and speaking at conferences and things. I was, I had these fabulous outfits and she called them her Oprah outfits. Like she could just walk onto the set of Oprah and she would feel amazing. And so, um, so she did this exercise where she cleaned her closet of everything that was not an Oprah outfit. Just, just, that was her litmus test, like a Marie Kondo spark joy thing. Right. And so she went through and she shopped her closet and she made outfits that felt like, like this is okay. And then she, when finances permitted, she started augmenting that wardrobe and she slowly started kind of retiring the schleppy clothes, um, of someone who felt very like small and invisible and like little, you know, and to like, this is what I wear. And she wouldn't just wait for being on a TV show, she started to be it now. And she wore um, these beautiful dresses and skirts. That was just her style, right? And um, and it and it helped her feel. So, so now she was sitting and standing differently. She was wearing what she was already gonna wear if this was already happening now. Um, she began to approach people differently at networking events and she would reach out to people that she'd never reached out to. This is now the doing, okay? So she went from the being it which was signified for her by clothing and posture. For you, it might be a touchstone, uh, a visual image. This is why vision boards are powerful. Like whatever represents, this is what's happening in your life. Um, other people have taken a calendar. They weren't, the clothing wasn't important, but they've taken a calendar and like pretended they bought like a separate calendar, a planner, and they wrote out what was in their calendar when they were being their vision. So it was like, instead of, you know, maybe what was normally on their calendar for the week, it was, oh, I'm on this podcast and then I have this speaking engagement and then I'm flying to this place to meet with this person. So they like wrote it out in an actual calendar. So it became real, right? So being, and then we get to ask for step two, what, what do I do today? What am I doing when I'm this industry leader? Like in the case of, of that client. And so she started reaching out to people who were more in leadership in her industry and saying, I'd love to have a 15 minute, you know, coffee on me with you or a zoom with you, or, um, I'd love to, you know, can I come volunteer at your next event? Right. She wasn't pretending that she was already, you know, established something she hadn't, but she was standing and she was wearing, and she was surrounding her environment with, with representation that this was happening. And then she was doing new actions. What would I do today? If I knew that I was this best-selling author, well, oh my God, I would write for an hour because I'd have my next book and I'd have an agent who's waiting for it. And I have a deadline with my publisher. So I'd write for an hour today, right? Do. The have just happens. If we be it and do it consistently, we will have that. The have will happen. The have will happen. It can't not. And, and I had in a totally different unrelated to thought leadership and writing, um, I worked with someone once who had tried so many times to lose weight and it just was always just didn't work. And I've shared the story before because it was so profound. And, She's like, I don't even want to make this a goal anymore because I just never, I just need to accept it is what it is. And, um, but she kind of gave it this one last ditch effort. And so she got into what am I being? Well, what I'm being is someone who like feels good in their body. I don't feel overly full at meals because I eat moderately. And I, um, I, I have again, outfits that actually fit me and look nice. And I feel I, I don't feel like I'm ashamed and hiding and um, I'm being, you know, I feel full of energy. Like I just, I'm like, I'm going to go on a bike ride. I'm going to go on, you know, so she got into this being and then doing. So it was like, okay, the doing for her was about movement. And she was like, well, a, a fit, healthy person is, is like, and they're jumping on their bike instead of driving to, you know, the friend's house that's a mile away or they're, um, they're taking a nice long walk after dinner instead of just sitting in front of the TV and eating whatever. And, um, and so she started doing 
movement. And she started doing, instead of, I'm going to eat this whole bag of whatever at four in the afternoon, because that's what I kind of crave salty snack. Um, I'm going to cut a piece of fruit. No, I'm not excited about it, but a fit, healthy person doesn't eat a bag of, you know, a giant side bag of chips at four in the afternoon and, you know, feel crappy and feel full and feel yucky and not be hungry for, for a healthy dinner. So I'm going to have this like banana or whatever, and then I'm going to go on that bike ride or that walk. And so she still was convinced that nothing would change, but by being and doing differently, her body changed. And it felt to her like magic because she wasn't, you know, in a whole dialogue about, she just was, she was being all the time, this fit, healthy person full of energy. And she was doing the things, even though she didn't feel the energy and the good yet that the fit, healthy person does because she now feels good and has full of energy. And she, you know, started wearing things that were honoring of her shape. And then the half came, the half came and, and she's maintained some years, five years now since we were working on that. Right. So, so be, do have. That's our work this week. I cannot wait to see what magic gets unlocked. So June was about a stretch goal. Now, July, we're going to move into be, do, have. Really take some time this week. This can change your life. So let's do it together. Okay, bye.